the show we're at now, uh, Seasons in Superbia, is um, a show I made over the last two years or year and a half um, that kind of deals with the more pop surrealist side of me. And for the last few years, I've been part of these two really big movements. One has been street art, which is insanely big, and pop surrealism, which actually originated out of LA, where we're at now, is the, the second biggest movement. And, um, and, the, and the kind of attitude that goes into the work of pop surrealism is very, a lot more personal, a lot more about being the first generation of media children and our, kind of our reaction to having all this media pushed at us and then how it kind of filtered through us and came out as something that was never intended to be. So um, I wanted the show to very much be about pop surrealism. The thing that, that's often misunderstood about pop surrealism is, is, is sometimes, especially with my work, it seems very cynical, but it's also very embracing too. It's like we, we love this stuff and we hated it. And I think that's confusing pe to people because they, they, they want you to pick one side or the other and they don't like that if you can see all the sides and actually see something of value in all sides. One of the big characters I use is um, Charlie Brown because, you know, growing up I, I was reading the Charlie Brown comic books and I very closely identified with Charlie Brown. And then I was starting to imagine, you know, eventually he ceased to be that little boy and, and started to, you know, it was the 60s, so he probably would have become involved with drugs or, or you know, other things would have happened besides his, his quiet little suburban life as a eight-year-old boy. So I, I just sort of imagined a bit of that. But, I, you know, he's something that I, somebody I've related to my whole life and, it, and I very closely identify with. And I want to make art that's about my relationship to these characters. So with me is I became interested in, in pop art and I had just moved to New York so I needed to have some kind of a job to support myself so I was lucky to get a job working for Ronnie Catrone who was Andy Warhol's main assistant and Ronnie was like a more fun-loving type of pop artist so um, he, he made me realize that all the pop artists like part of what you did was you, you took some iconic thing out of pop culture and you appropriated it as your own so um, he had appropriated um, Woody Woodpecker, and that was kind of, he just adopted that and took it back and made it his own. So I thought, well, if I'm going to adopt a character out of pop culture, I should probably adopt the biggest character. So I adopted um, Mickey Mouse and then Marilyn, and then put them together as a mashup, and, and that became my most iconic image. But it, it's kind of like a, a thing of, you know, taking culture back. Mickey Mouse was supposed to go into public domain, and, and and, and there's a reason for this law to exist, you know, because stuff, it should only benefit the creator during the life of the creator and not in perpetuity, and it shouldn't benefit Michael Eisner. What happened was um, Michael Eisner and uh, Trent Lott waltzing through Congress and they got him to change the laws to benefit that corporation, so, which is a very egregious thing. Even before a work of art is in the public domain, it's, it's open to parody and you can make social commentary using that. Um, what you cannot do is, is take um, an image like Mickey Mouse that's owned by a corporation, put it on a t-shirt because you have a warehouse full of t-shirts that nobody's buying, but you know that if you, if you squeegee Mickey on there, then people are going to buy it because they're actually buying this image that they've spent years building up and making into something. If I do Mickey Mouse Crucified, I'm obviously making a statement um, and I'm doing something that the Disney Corporation would never do to their mouse and, and any, any reasonable person would understand that this is not something Disney put out. This is a commentary on Disney. And, and, and that's something that's legal. And that's, that's actually very important that that's legal. Otherwise, we would be in, put in a position where we wouldn't be allowed to criticize corporations or, or government and the society would become slowly more totalitarian.